Hey everybody, this is American Nana. <clears throat> I have just a few thoughts. And that is, for those of you that are watching the Karen Reed trial, it goes so much deeper. It It is so much deeper than just Karen Reed. This town, this town is in the United States of America. The townspeople are begging for help. They're, it doesn't matter what they ask the select board to do. The select board makes decisions based on what they want. It is so clear that they are not listening to the people of Canton. It is, it's mind boggling to me. I know, I know. Take off my rose colored glasses, right? Where, who's gonna help them? Does the governor help them? I mean, who helps them? Their police chief is, I'm assuming corrupt. I know has charges on her. Why is she being put in another term against the people of the town's wishes? And why is Chris Albert, a convicted murderer, sitting on that board? His behavior the other night when Turtle Boy, and no, I don't follow Turtle Boy. It's nothing against him except that he's got a whole lot of videos out that have information that was not in the trial. I, I didn't want to hear any of that. I'll most likely go back and watch it because this is just too much to even comprehend that it's happening in our country. I don't know if anybody else feels the same way. Um, I, I don't know how to clip stuff, so I may get a big, um, I don't know, I may get in trouble, but the young jerks, They cover the Canton Select Board meetings. It's on their channel. Please check them out. I am putting up a portion of when the people were actually allowed to speak. <laughs> you elite men on this Select Board are twisted. And, I mean, come on, Chris Albert, his sister-in-law, what's her name, Julie, came flying out of that car like she was the biggest mafia gangsta around. And all she has is a loud mouth. She didn't even know what was going on. Those people, the Turtle Boy and his girlfriend Meredith were not bothering a single person. They were not harassing a single person. They went into a restaurant because they were hungry. They wanted a meal. You know what I'm also curious about? I'm also curious about where the, the food is being ordered from for the jurors. Does anybody know? Because I certainly hope it's not d &E pizza. That, <laughs> that would really take the cake in this case. So, um, what I did is I, I clipped the portion of the Young Jerks video of the 
select board meeting where the people were actually allowed to speak. Please listen to these people. They're crying out for change. They're crying out for help. The situation with Karen Reed is so much bigger than just her case. And I just can't help but ask myself over and over and over, what was the plan had Karen Reed not woken and went to search for Officer John O'Keefe? Has anyone for one second considered what kind of hell that brought to her? Because personally, I don't think that she was originally the person they were going to try to frame. I tend to think they were going to try to say the tow truck driver hit him. And after watching Lucky testify, I believe that would have destroyed that young man. but they had to have had a plan. What is very clear to me from this entire trial is people in that house know what happened to Officer John O'Keefe. That's what the evidence has shown me the evidence presented by the prosecution has shown me that Karen Reed is not guilty and the ones that hold the answers were in that house now how you then can even speak to the O'Keefe's is beyond me. I can say without a doubt watching this trial with the lack of evidence given by the prosecution, I would be mortified. I'd be mortified. I'd be horrified. I'd be mortified. Just mortified. Just horrified. I mean, come on. Come on. Look at the elitist in this town. Yeah, if I was sitting next to you, I'd probably give you a black eye because from what I've seen, oh, I don't know if I can say that. And so, okay, I wouldn't really give someone a black eye for opening their mouths. But you would have a look from me to know that you best did never speak to me again. And that definitely your game is up with me. How these family members cannot see through what you guys have done truly breaks my heart for them. What other option do they have? They have to hold the belief that the prosecution is correct. 
or they have to accept the fact that there are monsters walking among them that actually took part in what did happen to Officer John O'Keefe and they covered it up. This is my humble opinion and I'm entitled to my opinion and I'm voicing my opinion after watching all the evidence as they call it been presented. So I'm gonna play this it's probably 20 minutes and I'm gonna hope I don't get in trouble for playing somebody else's video but please watch this video check out the young jerks pay attention to what's going on in this community of people that are having to live in the tyranny that they live in and once again it's just a nana's opinion have a good day buddy Welcome to the June 25th, 2024 Select Board meeting. Uh, as a reminder, this meeting is being recorded by Canton Cable TV. Uh, the first item on the agenda is going to be our public comment period. And as we do uh, each meeting, uh, I will read a statement about the public comment. The public comment portion of the meeting is an opportunity to listen to residents' feedback and concerns but the public comment portion of the meeting is not meant to be a question and answer format. There will be no response to any public comment when presented. The public comment portion of the meeting is limited to 15 minutes total and three minutes per speaker. I would encourage those that do wish to speak to be mindful of others in the room who wish to do the same so that we can make the most of the time allotted and hear from as many people as possible. Anyone who does not wish to speak or who is unable to speak due to the, limit, uh, to the time limit may submit their comments in writing for the board's review and consideration, or they can attend and open uh, office hours with the select board. Uh, so the next open office hours uh, will be in July, but uh, we have not uh, settled on the date or time yet. It's just a little hard to coordinate with the summer uh, time, so, uh, but we will have that at the next meeting. So that being said, uh, let's begin with public comment. Liza Colburn, longtime Canton resident and loyal taxpayer. I am speaking to the people who are at home, who are Canton residents, who are not content with the status quo, simply to remind them that we have a chance to change three decades plus of that's how we do it in Canton starting in April when we have new candidates to outseat the person who referred to us as effing random citizens. Please come to vote in April if you don't like what happens tonight. Thank you. Ms. O'Donnell? Hold on, hold on. Yep, sorry, hold, just take some a minute to reset and. Okay. Um, Go ahead, Ms. O'Donnell. The chief of police out of Stoughton recently released a statement. I was profoundly disturbed and troubled by what I read. While I am not trained medical examiner, I am not qualified to draw any direct conclusions. The findings certainly warrant further examination at the highest level. As always, we will continue to assist with any efforts to ensure the truth and justice will prevail. Every good and decent police officer should be aware of the angry and angry about the injustice inflicted upon Sandra Birchmore. Sandra idolized police officers in what policing stood for in America, and she was victimized as a result. The only mantra a good cop must have is never again and never ever on my watch. Quoting another person today is Alan Jackson. You have the most powerful tool. You have a vote. You have agreed to give the community your best. What will you do in this moment? Will you say you will never look the other way? And lastly, quoting Chris Albert, you are an embarrassment. It's time for you to resign. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Elise Cohen, a Canton resident. <clears throat> With yesterday's awfully sad news that Sandra Birchmore's death in 2021 has been ruled a homicide, aka she did not commit suicide, but rather she was suicided by the father of her baby, who happened to be a Stoughton cop. In today's jury deliberations, we are on, and on the precip precipice sorry, of the verdict in the 2022 death of Officer John O'Keefe and the subsequent trial of Karen Reed, we are about to watch several persons in our community receive federal indictments. As such, we citizens and Canton taxpayers are no longer putting up with being ignored at these select board meetings. You simply cannot continue to pretend to listen to your constituents and sometimes not even pretend, but instead be fidgeting with your iced coffee or looking at your laptop playing solitaire, whatever you're doing, while people bring up very valid, crucial and urgent matters. This business as usual attitude is beyond reprehensible and shows uncaring, unethical behavior, especially while our town is on fire. Change is needed yesterday at a time when all eyes are on Canton to even consider contract renewal for our police chief who allegedly took part in the murder cover up is equally reprehensible. Chief Rafferty should be fired, not rehired. And for the select board to vote her back in to continue ineffectively leading the department where her reports have no respect for her is preposterous. All of our safety is currently at stake with her at the helm. And I wonder and I ask how you can possibly justify this vote. Certainly it is not by reviewing her past and current performance. CPD had no disciplinary actions reported since 2000. Yet I have a post commission report in my hands listing 61 complaints involving 25 out of 46 officers on the roster, many with multiple incidents. The officers were reprimanded, counseled, or were involved in civil lawsuits, resulting in the town paying out lots of money in settlements to the aggrieved. One officer was named in not one, but two civil lawsuits. And instead of getting fired, that officer got promoted. Insane, isn't it? And the chief herself had three complaints, with one ending in a civil lawsuit. Interestingly enough, three CPD uh, LE that were named recently as being allegedly involved in this case have no complaints. Chief Berkowitz, Kevin Albert, and Tim Kelleher. No complaints in, since 2000. <clears throat> Could be, I don't know. And three involved had complaints that once they were investigated were unsubstantiated, according to this report. <clears throat> That's Gallagher, Good, and Healy. In any case, I ask you to seriously consider the effect that renewing Helena's contract would have on this town. Thank you. Thank you. So, Donald, can you please step away? You've already been at the microphone. Can you please step back? All the way back, please. Thank you. You're up. Kristen Anderson, Canton resident. The woman ahead of me, the women behind me, the women too scared to speak, and myself, are somebody's daughter, sister, mother, maybe grandmother, and wife. Would any of you want the women near and dear to your heart to be treated in the same manner that we are by the boys of this town? And please do not confuse the boys with the men. There is no comparison, none. We demand respect. We will not shut up until we get it. Speaking of respect, Mr. Albert is still allowed a seat amongst you when he has no idea what respect is. His antics on Sunday evening were unacceptable. There is no law forbidding anyone from patronizing a neighboring business and the support he gave his family for disrespecting those patrons is disgusting and unacceptable. Mr. Albert, being on the board, holds him to a higher standard. But you laughed at the sexually inappropriate comments, the body shaming, the threats to smash somebody's skull up and down the street, and all the other comments that were very disrespectful to a woman. You laughed. You laughed as your sister-in-law called me fat. You laughed as your sister-in-law called me big bird. You laughed when your son said, and I quote, you look like a dude. Oh, and don't worry, 
I won't tell you, you got to go, because you already know. You are a sad representative of this town, an embarrassment, a disgrace. If you don't step down, shut your mouth, and have your family's mouths shut as well. Live up to the standards of an elected official. The women here tonight are strong women, and we will not be silenced by your arrogance. James White. So the last time I spoke, I talked about integrity of the board and what their responsibilities were as far as what they needed to do for the town. They do not owe Helena Rafferty anything. Their obligation is to the town's people. What is best for the town, not Helena. I mean, that is what your job is, what you were elected for. You ran for a position to run the town as best you thought. And if you think rehiring Helena is best for the town, you're sadly mistaken. The people have already spoken about that. So I don't understand what the problem is. Why can't you see that and address it and say that to the townspeople, we understand, we, we, we hear you, and we, we will do something to ensure that what we do is best for the town. The town of Canton, not Helena Rafferty or the police department, the town. That's what is, the voice is being spoken and that's what should be heard. And that's what you should be doing as representatives of the town. And, you know, <laughs> Mr. Albert, you represent the town right now, unfortunately. And your actions are speaking how you feel about how you represent the town, okay? Everybody's hearing what you're saying and everybody's hearing your silence, this board. Do something that is appropriate and save the town before it's too late. Ahead, My name is Carol Fowell Kelly, and I am a fourth generation Canton Townie. I'm not proud of this town anymore, the way my dad, grandmother, great grandparents were. And I was here just about a year ago, and I said, there was a bunch of townies, multi generational. We talked, and they said, Did you hear something bad happen at the Albert's house and it wasn't the girlfriend? And we said, Yes. So I got up and talked a year ago, and I've been trying to get other multi-generationals, but they're afraid their grandkids will be picked on, or they'll get, you know, stopped, or there'll be repercussions, or their kids won't make sports teams. So I said, okay, here I am again. It's like 29 months. I mean, how much patience? When Helena, Chief Helena said, you know, to have patience. How much patience? And as far as the weather goes, I, I just want to say it here. To put in the paper, have a policeman put in the paper in blizzard-like conditions, there were two to three inches. You could have seen anything there if it was there at that time. It's just very frustrating. And the only thing I can say is I wish the town could be put into receivership. I don't even know how to go about doing that. But I feel like nothing's happening. And even with court going on, I don't, I still, it's just not happening. And I just wanted to go back. I know I can't go back to the Canton of old, but the Canton of new can still be a good Canton if you work with us. Okay, that's okay. <laughs>
My name is Kathleen Howley. I'm a, I'm a resident of Canton. I am not a townie, and I'm not a well-connected townie. That means that I am like the vast majority of this town. The vast majority of this town is not townie and is not <coughs> certainly not well-connected townie. And I'm concerned about the safety of the people who are not well-connected townies. Because if we speak up, we get threatened, we get smeared. I had a creepy guy sitting outside of my house a few months ago. And I went to the police and I reported it. My neighbors, who don't scare easily, were scared for me. I had a picture of the car. At the end of filing my police report, I said, hey, wouldn't this be a great opportunity to use those flock cameras that we've all heard from you guys are so great and so useful. And that officer said to me, well, that would take a long time. And I understood, because I've been speaking out now for a year, I understood what he meant is, you don't count. The police are not here to protect you. We had a 911 call on Sunday night in the center of town. It took 17, 18 minutes for the police to respond. The police station was two miles away. When Mr. Albert calls the private cell numbers, as the well-connected townies do, they don't call, they don't call 911 like we call. They don't call you know, the recorded line. Hello? Yeah. hello, this is a recorded line. They don't know what that's like. We call and we say, hello. We hear, hello, this is a recorded line. What's, what is your problem, whatever. They don't do that. They call the cell phone numbers. And the officers self-dispatch, a term I never heard before I moved to Canton, self-dispatching police if you are a townie and a well-connected townie. I'm here to say I count, my family safety counts, the safety of all of the not well-connected townies counts. We pay most of the bills in this town. We pay most of the taxes that pay the police salaries. And we have gotten the message that we do not count. What are we worth? Maybe half a human life of a well-connected townie, but certainly not worth a townie, a well-connected townie. And I say well-connected because there are many townies here tonight, and there are many townies who have, who have spoken out <laughs> bravely and suffered and been threatened. And once you speak out, they don't care about you anymore. We count too, and we need a police chief who cares about all Canton residents and the safety of all Canton residents. We had two shooting threats. And we were told, trust the police, February, March, trust the police who think red solo cups are a good way to collect evidence? Thank you, Ms. Holla. Oh, somebody forced you at the back of the line again, and we passed off 15 minutes. If you can do it very quickly, I will allow you to speak, but we are past the 15 minutes, so Thank please. you very much. Thank I appreciate that. Then I will just get to the point. Thank you. Okay? So, look, we have a lot of issues in this town. We have a leadership problem in this town. Mr. Albert, I, I, I don't know. I guess you can just do whatever you want because there's no consequences, and it's a bad look for us. So I'm just trying to be brief. I do want to let this town know that we have a hero in this town. That is Lucky Lofgren. We love... We were told to wait for the trial and to form opinions after the trial. We have listened for nine weeks for this trial, and we heard 28 days of storytelling and one day from the defense with credible witnesses. We know what happened. We know we have a leadership problem. Lucky is the one hero from Canton who told the truth. And for the people in this town who have speak out, we have paid personal sacrifices, and I know Lucky has paid personal sacrifices too because that that's what comes with telling the truth. It has cost 
us relationships with our loved ones. It has cost our loved ones relationships with their loved ones. It has rippled and ripped families apart. That is why we are divided. We need more Lucky Lofgrens in this town. And I ask all of you tonight to rise to the challenge. Listen, I ask you, please, rise to the challenge of Lucky Lofgren. Vote like Lucky Lofgren. Vote your heart. Vote your truth. When it comes to the police chief's contract, please, it could be career ending. A yes vote could be career ending. Please do the right thing. We want to work with you. Thank you, Ms. Lombardi. <laughs> Folks, calm down. Next on the agenda, public hearing to request modifications to the 7th Amendment.